ana i pakanga hau te atu i te pō, te awa i ki hei au i mate. <coughs> Taka hia te riri ki raru o koutou waewae, a pōpō e poipāke a koutou. My illustrious warriors, I had war with God last night. Alas, I did not die. Trample hate underfoot. Tomorrow you become Pākehā boys. Uh, on the Pākehā side, Colonel Wynyard, that's my Pommy side. Uh, he is on my mother's side, my great-great-grandfather, and then Kawiti on my father's side. Uh, two, uh, two fighting together comes us. But the viewer today, or the visitor today, can look out and see the sacred mountains that represent the largest tribe in New Zealand, Ngāpuhi, and see the significance of that site and why it was chosen. I mean, if you have a look at it, he didn't even go back to the highest part of the, of the path site. He chose a lower part of it because that was the part that could see out the furthest vista. Because when you go, actually walk further back above the path, you start to lose some of those mountains I'm talking about. But when you're right there where that... Uh, uh, where the cannon is, you can actually see all the mountains around you. So I think, yeah, I think those, those are significant uh, metaphors for the reason why he chose that site, why he chose to engage his enemy at that area, why he facilitated their arrival at uh, uh, Rua Peka Peka from the Bay of Islands. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an amazing place. It's hard for me because I was brought up there. We played there as children. Our father, because of the fact that we are uh, the tangible evidence today, I guess, our families, uh, strangely two in one, both my father and my mother, but there are many other Māori families living within Northland that are the products of people that fought on different sides at Rua Pika Pika. And I think if that's uh, uh, the legacy that that battle brought to the North, it's been a great legacy because it has allowed us, uh, the descendants of those uh, enemies, and uh, to become friends. It has allowed us the opportunity, families like ours, to become the bridge between the culture that was, the culture that is, and the culture that will be. I think that's been one of the key aspects of, of Rua Peka Peka in a modern context. We've been able to, uh, in successive generations since that time, bridge both cultures, bring them closer together, give them a greater understanding about the other, um, but more importantly, it's a journey uh, that if you understand Māori psyche and Māori culture, it's a journey that never ends. It's a journey that goes from father to son, mother to daughter, father to son, mother to daughter, forever and a day. But to me, Rua Peka Peka is really special in that it, it means that I'm standing here today. This land is still ours and no one has taken it away from us. And that's what his fight was for. The whole, what territories Mata Hine, um, had, look, this whole valley still belongs to Māori. This hasn't been taken off us. And yeah, that's what it means to me, that his battle was worth it. Ko hau tako wera te mana, ko kahu kuri te tupuna, ko ngāti hau te hapu, no roto te whale tapu o ngāpuhi. He tangata mana, he ringa kaha ki te whenua, ngā tapu, ngā wahi tapu, Kei reira anō. Ko ia hoki te tangata no te ahi kā te whenua ti hewa Māori ora ki te whai ao ki te ao mara. My name is uh, Te Rā Nehua. I uh, descend from uh, Ngāti Hau, uh, who were supporters of Kawati in the Battle of Te Rua Peka Peka. I'm also a descendant of Patuone, who stood with the Redcoats, or the British. And of course there's that, uh, I suppose, conflict in, in, the, in, in that uh, on one side my tupuna was supporting Kawati, on the other side 
My tupuna stood with the British. I wouldn't say supported, but I say stood with the British. And uh, and so it's like the left hand fighting with the right hand, but we've got to we've got to acknowledge it, but not to live in the past. Otherwise, it presents issues for us. We've got to acknowledge our, our children and our, and our grandchildren um, uh, rather than creating things that will make it difficult for them to live in this world. Um, because we also, of course, have that um, the whakapapa to English Europeans as well. Um, Eru Nehua's father being American. Um, and so there's that need to have the acknowledgement without living in it, I suppose. This place for me and for my children and my grandchildren, for me, would I would like it to symbolise our, our culture, our Māori culture. Um, and the, the need to be living in this world, but acknowledging the, the history of the place and not to let it die away. There's a need to acknowledge the history, to have an understanding where we are in the present and, and having given us an idea where we're going to into the future. Uh, my name is Hannah Maxwell and I reside at the furthest point of uh, the Ngāti Ho boundary at a place called Te Maruata. I love this place. I, I come here a lot. I'm studying at the moment. And so my uh, thesis is about loss, is about the Ngāti Ho loss. And I've taken photographs of here and really, for the for as far as the eye can see, this way, that's not a way that's lost. If you get to higher points that way, the land is lost. Um, and it's really the things that Kawachi was saying about the loss of land and how it just went so quickly. And, um, you know, just, it just, and it did, it went so quickly. Um, and it's horrible when you read it and when you actually see how legislation was able to change the nature of land, how things were able to be transformed even by surveyors. The original name of this land was Te Motua Henefa, uh, named after um, our Ngāti Hau ancestor Henefa that lived here. Uh, she had a kainga here, um, a house, um, clearings and cultivations. Um, after her passing, the name changed to um, Huirau. Um, it's still known as that today. Prior to 1914, there was a lot of um, um, uh, court cases about uh, um, regarding who the owners were of this land. Um, in 1914, they determined that it belonged to Ngāti Manu and Ngāti Hau, um, equally. Um, also in, in 1914, um, um, one of our ancestors, Atirea Tarihi, he was given a chit at the um, uh, Court of Arika Native Land Court and the chit stated that he would be paid 20 pounds for this land. He wasn't, um, he didn't receive the 20 pounds until 1921, seven years later. So what we can determine from that is that um, either interest on finance hadn't been invented in 1921 or it didn't apply to natives. Um, the other significant part that um, we need to acknowledge is that in 1914, when this land was taken under the Public Works Act, was that the First World War started. So Māori were going overseas, uh, quite possibly to be killed, and whilst this was happening, back home their land was still being taken. The, uh, what the Po represents is that uh, um, Ngātio is still here today, We'll still be here tomorrow. It's um, it's uh, it's a place for our for ourselves to come, for our children, future generations to come. 
that this is a, uh, a significant site for, for all New Zealanders, um, people of the world. Um, it, should be, it should be treated with respect. Um, it has so much history here. Um, it's um, in some ways changed the way of the world in terms of uh, trench warfare. Um, it's a place to be enjoyed.